copyrighted program created by Rio Grande. Fresno County Sheriff's Office calling all cars. Attention all cars. Broadcast 227 regarding a missing person. Be on the lookout for a man described as a French Basque descent. Five feet, eight or nine inches. About 140, 145 pounds. This man was last seen on February 8, 1915. That's all. Rose and Quizzle. Oh, see, Poyano, 
Sometimes when I am alone at night and the moon is shining so bright outside and I can look way over there at the mountains with the snow so cold and white and still, something seems to say to me, Cipriano loves you. You love him. Life with him will be calm and peaceful and strong, just like those mountains. Then... Then? Then I am afraid. I see storm clouds over the mountains. And the wind howls across the plains, and the moon does not shine anymore. And I think maybe life will be like that with us, stormy and cold and bare. Oh, life will not be like that to us, Maria. I love you. I will always love you. You love me too, but you are young, you are afraid. Is that not so? Sometimes I am afraid. Oh, do not be afraid, Chiquita. I will protect you. I will be like a mountain, strong and calm. But I will not be cold, querida mia. Oh, let the clouds come and hide the moon. Let the winds come and howl around the houses like hungry coyotes. My arms will be about you, and you will be safe and warm. When you talk to me that way and hold me in your arms, I forget about the storm clouds. My heart wants to sing and tell everybody, I love Cipriano. He loves me. We are going to be married. Oh, querida. Te amo. Querida mia, te amo. Here, what's going on out here? Get into the house, Maria. Get, I say. But Mrs. Moran, I did not do anything wrong. You want to keep on working for me in my house, Maria? Yes, Mrs. Moran. Then get. As you, young man, I've told you a dozen times, stay away from here. That girl's too good for the likes of you. Who are you to say Maria's too good for me? I love Maria. She loves me. We are going to be married. And you cannot stop us. I can't, eh? Well, that's what you think. Let me tell you something, the young buckaroo. If I catch you hanging around this girl again, or any other girl who works for me, I'll make you wish you'd never heard of this ranch. Just what will you do? You come around here again, and I'll show you what I'll do. I am going to marry Maria. Over my dead body. Perhaps. But just the same, I will marry her. If you ever set foot inside this yard again, Maria will be mourning a corpse. I will kill anybody who tries to come between Maria and me. That's a game two can play, young fella. Remember that. Cipriano, my friend, what is he trouble? Uh, Maria. Uh, what about Maria? What Moran woman is torn or against me? Ah, uh, that's nonsense. I thought Maria loved you. She did. Then how did Mrs. Moran turn her against you? Well, that I do not know. But she has. When did you see her last? Uh, Maria. A week ago. I went to see her last night, but she would not talk to me. Well, forget her. Women are like that. Maria is not like that. Nah, they're all the same, I know. Do not say things like that about Maria. Oh, huh? here, here. Don't get angry, my friend. I meant nothing against her. Just all women. That has been my experience. She is not like that. Ah, you're a hot-headed fool, Cipriano. Don't call me fool. Oh, come on, cool off, cool off. Forget the whole thing. Oh, oh I'm sorry, Constanza. I lost my head. I, I've been so worried. Why don't you go away? Some other place to work. Try to forget, Maria. Where would I go? I have no money. Only my teams and wagons and that little piece of corn land up the creek. You might sell your team. Uh, who would buy them? All the men we know around here are poor men, like ourselves. Why, even you need money as badly as I do. I will tell you a secret, my friend. I have $1,700 in the bank. You are? Yeah, I have been saving it for a long time. But why? Uh, I thought maybe I might be able to persuade you to sell me your outfit. I could start in business for myself. Oh, but $1,700 is not enough. I, I would have to have at least 2000 the outfit is worth much more than that, even. Oh, I know it. But uh, I know a fellow who will buy one of the teams from me, and with that I could pay you the rest of the money. Oh, uh, oh, that's wonderful. I can leave your men. Yeah. Uh -huh. I can go someplace where the, no one knows me and start all over again. Yeah, it is a great opportunity, my friend. Oh, when can you get the money, Constance? Just as soon as I see the other man. And uh, when I have looked at the land. Have looked at the land? Oh, but yes, the land, it is good land. Oh, I don't doubt it, Cipriano, I don't doubt it, but I want to see for myself if it is good corn land. Well, I've raised many crops of corn on it. But I still must look at it for myself. 
Oh, very well, then. Uh, tomorrow we go to look at it. In the morning, that will be all right? Yes, in the morning. Early next morning, as a steady rain blew across the Kettleman Plains, two men drove along the deserted road that led to the cornland. Curious eyes watched them drive away. Curious minds wondered why Constant McVeigh and Cipriano Urtason were driving down the country road in the rain behind a pair of borrowed horses. Late in the afternoon of that day, Constant McVeigh returned a weary team to the stalls of Huron's own delivery stable. In the surrey, mud splattered, lay a muddy shovel and a paper bag filled with mushrooms. The cold February night had fallen, and the light of scattered lamps was appearing in windows as Constant McVeigh unhitched his tired horses and went into the office of his employer, Mike Xavier, owner of the stable. Hello, Mike. I'm back. Have any trouble? Yeah. Trouble? With mud. Oh, no. I went out and drove around over the land a little. Wasn't very muddy. I uh, put the team up and set them. Okay. See you in the morning. Oh, uh, Mike, uh, here's a bag of mushrooms I picked out there today. Hmm? Uh, maybe your sister could use them, huh? Mushrooms? Yeah. Uh, uh, sure, thanks, Thompson. And, uh, Mike, uh, I'm going to San Francisco tomorrow. Mm-hmm. I wonder if you could get somebody to take my place right away. Ain't this a little sudden? Well, uh, not exactly. Uh, you see, I got to run up to San Francisco for a week to sign up the papers on Cipriano's stuff and... Uh, well, I'll be wanting to start my own business when I get back. Well, I guess I can make some arrangements. Thanks, Mike. I appreciate that. Well, I'm going over to the room. If Sam come in, send him over, will you? Sure. But Constant McVeigh did not come back. Letters which were forwarded and returned unclaimed. No word was received from Cipriano Urtison or his companion, Constance McVeigh. The two men had completely vanished. The rain ceased, and February became March. One day, a suspicious man went to the office of Ed Arnold, constable. Come on in, Sam. Sit down. Now, what's on your mind? Oh, it's that fellow McVeigh, he calls himself. He sold me a pair of mules for $900. I gave him 300 cash, and I was going to give him the rest when he got back from San Francisco, but... Never came back. Well, what are you worrying about? You've got the team, haven't you? Yes, but I never got a bill of sale. And besides, the team belonged to Cipriano Ortizum. And he hasn't been back either since he went away with that McVeigh. What's wrong with that? Well, it looks funny. This McVeigh and Cipriano, they live together. McVeigh always talked about needing money, and then all of a sudden he shows up with enough to buy Cipriano's teams. At least he said he bought them. But where's Cipriano? Have you looked for him? Well, sure. But we can't find Hyde nor hear of him. And you can't find McVeigh, huh? No. Nope. Where did Cipriano and this fella live? Well, they had a room together close to the livery stable, upstairs over an old store. Well, <clears throat> maybe we'd better take a walk over there and see if we can get a line on these fellas. <laughs> Did Cipriano say he was going away? No, senor. He 
she said we were going to be married, and nobody could stop us. Uh, what did Mrs. Moran say to that? She said, over my dead body. Mm-hmm. Where is Mrs. Moran? She's in the house. Should I call her? Yes. Mrs. Moran? Mrs. Moran? Senor Arnold wants to see you. What is it, Maria? Senor Arnold, the constable, he wants to talk to you. Oh, hello, Ed. How are you? Pretty good, Mrs. Moran. And you? Can't complain. It looks like they're going to have a lot of trouble over in Europe. Ed, did you want to talk to me about the war or something else? Well, as a matter of fact, I'm trying to get a line on young Ertesim. What about him? That's what I'm asking you. Hmm, I don't know anything about him. I told him to clear out of here and stay out and keep away from Maria. I haven't seen him since. And when was this? Mm, about a month ago. Why? Just curious. You're more than curious, Ed. What's on your mind? You didn't do away with Cipriana, did you? Are you crazy? Nope. But he hasn't been seen since you had a fight with him, and you say you did have an argument. I'm just putting two and two together. Well, you're getting the wrong answer, Ed. I don't have any idea where the boy is or what happened to him. What makes you think something's happened to him? Why, well, nothing particular. All I know is he was supposed to have left town with that McVeigh fella. Find him and you'll know where Cipriana is. I've already checked on him. He's missing, too. Listen, Ed. I'm not afraid of any investigation you might make. But I'll tell you somebody who saw McVeigh before he took the train. You might try talking to him. All right. Who is he? Hugo Subron, the blacksmith. What does he know about Erdison? Why don't you ask him? All right. Think I will. Hey, Hugo, put that wagon tire down and come here. A minute. Hello, Ed. What's on your mind? Seen Cipriano Ertison or Thompson McVeigh around lately? Well, not for three weeks or so. Not since they drove off in the rain one morning. Haven't seen them since, eh? No, haven't seen Cipriano at least. No? Any idea where they might be? Well, I've got an idea where Cipriano is. That so? Where? I've got a hunch we'll find him somewhere out on his farm. Well, what makes you think he's out there? He went out there with McVeigh, didn't he? Sure. And he hasn't been seen since, no. No. I saw McVeigh at the station the night he left. He told me how he was meeting Cipriano and going on to San Francisco with him. But he didn't have Cipriano's clothes with him. And I know Cipriano didn't take them with him when he left that morning. How do you know? Because I saw the surrey before they left. And all it had in it was a shovel. It had the same shovel in it when the surrey came back. But it was muddy. I was just outside Mike's office next door. When McVeigh came in, and his shoes were muddy, too. He gave Mike some mushrooms, he said, he picked along the road. But I happen to know that the only mushrooms out that way grow on Cipriano's cornland. Notice anything else? What? Oh, not right then. But later on that night, I went over to see McVeigh. He told me there, too, before that I had a gun he wanted me to look at. And he did the same thing. Well, when I got there... He was packing Cipriano's clothes. And I saw Cipriano's gun in the suitcase. Yes, I saw that too. I, I know there's something else. That night I was talking to McVeigh. What was that? McVeigh had his thumb bandaged. I asked him how he hurt it. And he said uh, he cut it with a knife. But while he was packing, the bandage uh, slipped off in it. I saw it uh, just uh, to a teeth. Teeth marks. Teeth marks? Yeah, that teeth mark. Hmm. Is that a shovel around here, Hugo? No. Mike's got the same one McVeigh used last month. Let's go over and get it, and get a team, and drive out to Cipriano's farm. Hastily hitching the same team that had been driven by McVeigh and Ortisum a few weeks before... Constable Arnold and Hugo Suberon started out, following the route McVeigh had said he followed. At last, they reached the juncture of the road leading to Cipriano's farm. Whoa! They see any tracks that look like the Surrey might make? Sure, see, right there, leading off to the left. 
Yes, I see. Lucky it hasn't raised since they disappeared, Hyde. Uh-huh. There are two sets of tracks there. Yeah? Two sets of hoof prints. One set's coming out, and one going in. Looks like the team was being driven pretty fast coming out. Yeah. At least at a trot. Well, we might as well get on over to Cipriano's farm. It's straight ahead, about a mile. Get there. Come on, get along. Hey, there, 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 there. I'll pull up a minute. Looks like the tracks are turning up the creek bed here. I don't see any reason for a man driving up this creek if he's looking for cornland. I still have my doubts about that cornland story. Well, what do you mean? McVeigh never struck me as being the kind of man who'd be interested in farming. Maybe you're right. But what about the fellows who took Cipriano to Kalinga? You didn't see any buggy or wagon tracks going that way, did you? I come to think about it, I didn't. Whoa. Whoa, I said. What is it? Look. Where? Right under that bush. Oh. Fresh earth. Let's get that shovel and see what's under there. Here's where the Surrey tracks turn around. What do you think you'll find? I don't know. Yes. There are a lot of tracks around here. Footprints. Uh-huh. But do you notice that only one set of them lead away from here? Yeah. That looks bad. I'm afraid it does. Found something. Uh-huh. The body of Cipriano Erdison. <laughs> His shovel soon uncovered the grisly evidence of the murder of Cipriano, his skull caved in by a shovel, his neck broken, his body thrown into the shallow grave while life still pulsed through his veins. No longer was the question, where is Cipriano Urteson? But it now became, where is Constant McVeigh, his murderer? For months, every law enforcement officer of Fresno County searched for the missing man. Circulars were distributed by the thousands throughout the United States. Rewards were offered by officials and citizens. Time passed, and Constance McVeigh became a dim memory. War flared in Europe and enveloped America. Women took their places with men at the voting booths. Prohibition became a legal fact, but not an actuality. Somewhere a switch was thrown, and a million homes heard voices and music thousands of miles away. A lone flyer winged his way eastward into the first solo flight across the Atlantic. Paper fortunes pyramided, soared to unheard of heights, then crumbled overnight. Untold wealth suddenly became abject poverty. Then, 15 years after the body of Cipriano Urtison was taken from his smothering bed of earth, under Sheriff Frank Lemoyne of Rawlins, Wyoming, arrested a man known as Julian Ivanhoff. Well, Ivanhoff, you ready to admit you stole that steer and killed it? Yes, sir. Why'd you do it? Well, I needed money to buy clothes for my wife and children. How many children have you got now, Julian? Three. Two boy and a girl. Hmm. Well, didn't it occur to you this might not be the best way to help them? No, I didn't think about that. You know, you shouldn't have used a horse, Julian. Horse hoops are easy to follow in the snow. Yeah, I know. Well, Julian, we aren't going to press this charge against you. You're not? Nope. Then I can go home now? Well, not just yet. You see, I'm waiting for the train to get in. For the train? Yeah. It's bringing the sheriff of Fresno County. You know, out in California. He's coming to take you back. Take me back? I uh, don't understand. You will. I have an officer. This is Sheriff Jones, the officer I told you about. Howdy, McVeigh. Here's that circular, Sheriff. Well, I'll be doggone. March 22, 1915. That's a long time, Lemoyne. Well, I wired you as soon as we found it. Charlie Johnson, that's my jailer, and I were looking through some old warrants and wanted circulars the night we arrested Ivanoff, or as you call him, McVeigh, for stealing a steer. That name seemed familiar to us somehow. When we found that circular, I knew we had your man. Huh. Hasn't changed much, has he? No, not much. Well, when do you want to start back with him? Oh, just as soon as Sheriff Austin will let me take him. Well, 
Guess we might as well let him tell his family goodbye and get him ready to go. See that grave, McVeigh? Yes. That's a little deeper than the one you buried him in, isn't it? I didn't do it. No? What killed him, Doctor? Looks like a blow on the head with a flat object. Probably a shovel. No. No, I didn't hit him with a shovel. What did you kill him with, McVeigh? It was an accident. Yes, that's it. It was an accident. He was he was going to shoot me. His gun fell out on his seat. We fought for it. He was going to shoot me. I, I bent his arm around like this, the back of his head. Then the gun, she went off. I felt him get limp. I, I knew he was dead. I was scared, and I buried the body there so no one would find it. But somebody did find it, McVeigh, 15 years ago. And there were no bullet holes in the skull. It was an accident, I tell you. The bullet, she went in right here, back of the ear. Any bullet holes in that skull, Doctor? No, nope, Sheriff. Just caved in, right here. Take it away. Take it away. Take it away. All right, McVeigh. Tell us about it. We, we went out to the cornland. I was going to look at it. He thought I was going to buy it. But I wasn't. Uh, I didn't have money enough to buy anything. I had to have money, too. Because the fellow who knew me before, he was going to turn me over to the officers. They said I stole some horses up in Montana. I didn't steal them. But this fellow, he was going to tell the sheriff that I did. I had to pay him. I had to have Cipriano's money. When we got out of the corn land, Cipriano, he got out of the buggy and saw some mushrooms. Look, Constant. See the mushrooms. We will take some back to Maria, no? Yeah. You want to? You act so strange, Constant. Why are you getting the shovel out? I want to dig down a little ways to see if the land is rich enough for the corn. Oh, it is rich enough, all right. So, you'll take the mushrooms to Maria, will you? No, my friend. You'll never take anything to Maria. Or to anyone else. I shall have Maria all to myself, my friend. Go ahead and pick your mushrooms. You'll never eat them. Constant, what are you doing? Why are you looking at me that way? Put that shovel down, Constant. No, do not do that, Constant. Now, Cipriano, your things are all mine. Everything is mine. I shall sell them all, Cipriano, and buy pretty things for Maria. She shall be mine too, Cipriano. Maria shall be mine. All mine. She shall love me. That was the way it happened, Sheriff. That was the way he died. Why did you run away if you loved the girl? Why didn't you stay around? I don't know. I was afraid. I was afraid. In just a moment, Sheriff Overholt will conclude our program. I have a confession to make, friends. Rio Grande Cracked Gasoline has a police record. It has a record 55 million miles long, achieved in a single year by being the gasoline that powers more police cars, fire engines, ambulances, and other emergency equipment wherever it is sold than any other brand. Think of it. A 55 million mile endorsement by the most qualified buyers and users of gasoline. And now, building that record to even greater heights is the fact that the state of California and the United States government have recognized the superior qualities of Rio Grande de Crack and have specified it for use in their emergency automotive equipment. In the face of these facts, how can an intelligent buyer use those average gasoline? Drive into the nearest red and white Rio Grande station. Tank up with Rio Grande de Crack. You'll get police car performance with the finest gasoline that money can buy. And now, Sheriff Overholt. Constant McVeigh was tried at Fresno, found guilty of murder, and sentenced to San Quentin, where he has paid for his crime. How he eluded the law for 15 years has always remained a mystery, but the keen eyes of officers of, at Rawlins, Wyoming, brought about his capture, 
and he has since learned that, as usual, his crime did not pay. Thank you, Sheriff Overholt. Office calling all cars, attention all cars, cancellation of broadcast 227 regarding a missing person. This man was found murdered. That's all. Rolls and quiz. This is your narrator, Frederick Lindsley, bidding you good night for Rio Grande. <laughs>